Hi everybody and welcome to Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal Ireland webinar for this week. Uh, we're here with you on a Monday for a change, you're usually Thursday, so it's lovely to be here with everybody and this week we are welcoming Marina Hayes who is joining us live from her salon in Waterford uh, which is called Confession Box. Uh, hi Marina, thank you for joining us. Hi, thanks a million, it's, I'm great to be here. And uh, just to fill everybody in uh, on a few of uh, Marina's sort of accolades. So you're award-winning stylist, you've been on Team Ireland, you're the global brand ambassador for Pharma Vita, you're executive board member on Hairdressing Council of Ireland, and you've done loads and loads of fashion and the hair shows. So, so we, I suppose we, we decided to chat to you today because uh, you have that like lovely combination of you're like running your own business, but you also do a lot of creative work, which I think a lot of, you know, uh, hairdressers, salon owners sort of aspire to do, you know, a little bit of both. So um, maybe if we just uh, start off with uh, chatting to you about, you know, you have your own business, very yep. successful. It's going to turn five in 2021, is that correct? It's going to turn five in 2021, yeah. Yep. Crazy. And uh, just, uh, you know, having your own business, um, how has that helped you creatively and what creative freedom does being your own boss give you? Sorry, it just lagged out there. One oh, sorry. Now. You're okay. I've got you again. Okay. I uh, did you hear what I said? No. No, it just you just froze there for a second. Okay. No, <laughs> sorry. I had okay. I had asked you um, how help how your having your own business, running your own salon, has helped you creatively, and what creative freedom being your own boss like what has it given you, or how much creative freedom. seems to be lagging again this is the worst thing with, with zoom can you hear me now i can hear you can you hear me i can hear you um basically owning my own hello <laughs> i can yeah i can hear you i heard you there do you want to start again I will. I'm so sorry. It just no, you're fine. back in again. Yeah. Um, Technology. Oh, I know. <laughs> so owning my own salon has given me a lot more freedom because I can work to my own schedule. When I was working for other people, I would have to use up all my holidays um, to do creative work when I was going away um, and competitions and stuff like that because I was working to their schedule. So um, opening up the salon has given me... Um, literally a little bit more stability to follow my creative dreams and also to still work within a team. Um, I did try for a while before I opened the salon to work on my own, but I felt that I wasn't, I wasn't learning and I was frightened that I be, would become stale not being around other hairdressers. So I have the best of both worlds and I absolutely adore it. Okay, great. And I know you had said to me previously that you have an amazing manager called Sheila. And, uh, you know, she, you said that she, you know, sort of is, is a huge part of, uh, you know, running the business and letting you a little bit, you know, go off doing your own things on the side. Um, and what other ways can you combine working a business with still working creatively on your own passion? Like just for anybody that's tuned in, what would you say are the most important things to have in place so that the business is because it is a business and obviously you know you have to pay your rent and your rates and your your salaries and all of that stuff um but like to make sure that it's running properly and also that you're meeting client demands but that like you as a hairstylist you're getting to be you know creative at the same time so as a person i know where my weaknesses lay and basically because i am more creatively brained uh, my sometimes my organizational skills uh, are much to be desired so number one for me is to have someone like Sheila in place that will literally tell me and give me my schedule of like this 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 has to be done and she'd organize the book if I needed to which never really happens if I if there was something that I had to organize on short notice she would organize with my clients make sure that they were all accommodated um, so she's my first point of contact also, you need a really solid team around you that are trustworthy and talented and hardworking. 
Now that for me is the hardest, but I have one of the best teams, I think, in Ireland. They can work well on their own. They, they slot in and, and not to overwork people, you know, that kind of way. So I have Sheila who manages the salon. And even when I'm on the floor and I am just doing my day-to-day -day business, um, because when you're with a client, you're with a client. So I don't want my brain going to six, seven different people at the one time. I'll just say to Sheila and she'll organize and she'll let me know what time colors are up at, what time I have this at. And it's amazing. And also then the team behind it, they work as a steady train, you know, and um, they're creative and talented and they're just a wonder to watch. So I think for me, having a good manager and a good team is how I am able to do the, the creative side to, to me as a hairdresser and me as a person. And uh, as he said there, it's like kind of, it's a good idea, do you think, to recognize um, your own, I don't like using the word weaknesses, but I suppose like, you know, your own laneway that you're better off staying in one lane way and letting somebody else look after the other stuff that you're not maybe as good at. Yeah, like uh, for me, it took me years to understand because um, I, I would have had a habit of micromanaging and to let, to let go even in, in other jobs and to let go of that part and give that to someone else was, was very hard. But I, I do realize that it is a weakness. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think you should be more, people should be more open about their, their weaknesses. As humans, we're all told we have to be the best at everything and we have to be always okay and we have to, but we're not, we're just human. So to recognize our own weaknesses is I think a strength because then you can delegate yeah. your weaknesses to other people. And also you can, you can take other people's ideas on board. Whereas if you're just stuck in thinking about yourself and not the larger picture, you're just pigeonholing yourself. And you will end up staying in your own laneway. Do you know what? What's the good of yeah. staying in your own laneway? You have to be. There's no creativity in, in staying in a box. Yeah. Okay. And um, so you've won numerous awards, and I know you've worked on loads of fashion shoots and different shows. And maybe just for everybody tuned in, you could just give us list out a few of them. And I know before we went live, we were talking about your um, your foray into reality TV. <laughs> So yeah, that was an experience. I was on Extreme Hair Wars um, reality TV show. It was amazing. You got to do um, avant-garde styling and fantasy styling, but you had to do it there and then. So you had a model and then you had to like, I created top hats out of hair. I created um, a jungle scene and butterflies and an anchor out of someone's beard and you battled other teams. So when we started down, we would have had 15 teams starting off. So there would have been a hairdresser and a makeup artist. Um, my makeup artist was phenomenal. She was phenomenal. Um, and then you battled it down. So every week someone got basically as reality TV, they had to go home. So thankfully I stayed <laughs> two. So it was crazy cause I was going over to London every, every week. And then I was coming back to work and then going over again. It was a crazy time. I didn't expect to be in it that long. But thankfully, I was. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was actually, that's what I was just going to ask you, actually, in terms of the, the sort of the timings of it. You didn't have to live over there, did you? You just had to go back and forth. Yeah, lucky enough, it's only a short flight from Dublin to, to London. And um, the producers collected me from the airport every time. So it was, it was okay. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then you would come back to Waterford and, like, do your daily job and yeah. then go off again the following week. Okay. <laughs> I don't like that. And, <laughs> yeah, and then um and then so the other stuff that you've done, you know, you've done a lot of fashion shoots and um and you've won, you know, what different awards have you won? Maybe talk us through them. Um a few years ago we actually won um the Irish Times had a hundred best shops in Ireland and we got onto that list. So for me that was an amazing amazing accolade uh, because it wasn't just hairdressers it was shops within Ireland mm -hmm. and we were only freshly open at the time and um, I'd say just under the year so it just proved that myself and the team worked so hard to get on that and we actually got recognized it was it was crazy but yeah we I suppose 
been the global ambassador for Pharma Vita. I previously I had been on a, a team called ID Artists because I had worked with a salon that was L'Oreal based salon, and um, so had done some stage work, um, UK, Ireland, and and around the um, around uh, Europe. So it kind of it started me off knowing and giving me that hunger for stage work. So at today, as it stands, I'm the global ambassador for Pharma Vita. So I go to many, many different countries between Australia and I educate. Um, my passion would always be, as you can see by my hair, colour. I love colour, yeah. I love anything that's a little bit different. Um, but I also like the beautiful, you know, like soft, natural colours also, because they're actually quite difficult to create. People don't realise how difficult they are to create. Um, and then I suppose I did London, Milan and Paris Fashion Weeks. Um, that was crazy. Um, I was an assistant hairdresser under Guido, so to get that one opportunity was insane. Um, we did actually, for the last couple of years, we were on the main stage for HJ Live. Um, so, That's right. yeah, that was, that was good. I really, really enjoyed that. And as a, a creative outlet, there was no brief. It was just create a show. So usually when you're working within the constraints of anything, you have a brief. So it was amazing not to have a brief and to to let me and the team just kind of like run free with our imagination. It, it was amazing. And we had choreographed that we got in like dancers and models. And it that was that was a wonderful time, I have to say. But uh, yeah, we also won. I, I sound <laughs> um, I get embarrassed by all this. <laughs> Um, we won Editorial Salon of the Year by the High Style Awards. Um, so that was, again, because of the work that we do um, and our magazine work and our show work, that was an amazing to win that all show Ireland. Um, to be honest, that was the one that I really held dear. So that was the one that, like, when our name got called out, I just went ballistic. <laughs> ballistic. I was shouting, screaming, clapping, crying, everything. <laughs> Um, and, and just, you know, when you're talking there about, okay, sometimes you get a brief and then sometimes you don't get any brief, which is amazing. You know, how do you come up with your ideas? Do you, is it a team-based approach? Do you all sit down together? Do you all have different sort of things that you bring to the finished product? Like, how does it start? So there's, there's two different processes. Sometimes when it's, it's a, a group process, um, more times than not, I'll have a, an idea, a small concept of what I might like. And then I find it really hard to articul articulate what I, what I have here out into the world. So I do a thing called mind mapping. Now, mind mapping is just literally writing it down and, and doing the little things all off it. But then I sit down with my team so we can, they can understand where I'm going and I can understand where they're going. And then we, we create um, a mood board and we create actually several mood boards you know one is a written mood board and one is a visual mood board so that we know exactly where each other are going and we can have a dis an open discussion about what we think is right even down to the sandals on the shoes or the music you know so I think it's really uh, important to have an open dis discussion when you're working as part of a team but like I'm part of another team that's called hair slayers um so that's a, an international um, artistic team. And I was over in Hollywood back in October of last year before All right. over the world. Um, so that was a different process. I was, I was given a slight brief, but, but basically my brief was, these are the colors that we wanted to use. And then you had band, you know, you do your styling on them. And so both of them was, was for styling again. Um, so I had to come up with there and then a start, a middle and an end before I went on stage. So I have a story. For me, I need a story. I think that every piece of hair, every show, every photo shoot for me has to have a story because I am the type of person I like to have an emotional connection to mm -hmm. it. Um, whereas I think that beautiful hair is beautiful hair. But if there's a story, it's like a painting. If there's a story behind it, it means more to you and other people can understand it that little bit more. So 
if that if that answers your question in a roundabout way <laughs> yeah perfect and um i suppose you kind of touched on it there earlier on um i was going to ask you know do you work creatively more in the areas where you've like mastered techniques such as color and do you think it's better to to sort of stick with that or do you branch out is, is like all your creative work mainly in color so i don't think that anybody should um basically stay stay in their own lane i i do believe in technique i do believe in hours of work to be put in anybody not not anybody you can have someone who's creative and lazy and then someone who's <laughs> like basically not creative but really hard working and they will out they will outdo the lazy person every single time um, for me, I, I think you have to like explore ideas and be inquisitive and question and hone your skills. Like when you're on Team Ireland, um, it's a hundred hours just doing one haircut. A hundred hours is crazy. And how many dollars did you go through? But it is, it's a hundred hours breaking down the time, breaking down the technique. And I think technique comes before everything. You must master all the techniques and all your fundamentals before you explore so for me when i'm training people i'm very militant I, i'm ex-military as well so i'm very you must learn a b c d before we go on and, and work on creative everybody can have an idea but you need to be able to execute it properly okay so you're a big believer in in um you know like you can have a creative person but that's it requires more you know the way like people say that like you know you you that with talent and creativity you know there's this sort of notion that like the person just produces something out of nowhere because they're so creative but <laughs> no it's like hard work <laughs> hard work like i think people sometimes confuse talent with not have not doing hard work with hard work comes the talent because that's yeah when you hone your skills you know you like I would have wild, wild ideas when I was a teenager, but now I'm closer to 40, you know, like you, <laughs> learn, you learn how to how to break it down a little bit more. And um, I do believe in, in hard work and I do. But creativity and, and talent is, is a need for me, as in the creative process is a need within me. I need it if if I'm taken away from that, I, I don't exist as Marina. But that the hard work is something that you have to push yourself to get up and do um, because it becomes boring because it's uh, repetitive. But that's mm -hmm. what gets you onto the next level. That's what gets you educating. That's what gets you how to explain to other students or other people how to break it down, how to do each haircut, each color, each up style. Um, so unless you know it, you can't give it out to the world. Yeah, and you're quite passionate about educating as well, aren't you? Oh, I love educating. I I, I used to go to seminars when I was um, starting out in the industry. And I was the person that would sit there at the very front with their hand up, shouting loads of questions um, because I wanted to know everything. Um, but sometimes I found that people were quite closed about what they had learned as if they didn't want to give it out i don't believe in that i think as an industry the only way we grow is by sharing our secrets with other people and other people sharing their secrets with you because we're all different and we have different ways of doing things we mightn't completely um, take that person's uh, technique on board but we'll adapt it with our own technique to make a new one and that's how our industry keeps evolving um, otherwise, we will just do the same seven haircuts for the rest of our lives. And who wants to do that? Yeah. And just, you know, for anybody like who's, you know, maybe not necessarily starting out, but maybe they're a little bit younger in the business. You know, they're, they've only been around a few years or whatever. And we kind of just touched on this briefly already. You know, what would you say to somebody who, I suppose, like you, when you were saying when you were a teenager, you had all these mad ideas. You know, what would you say to anybody who has those, sort of you know mad ideas and like that sort of vision um and is it an, i know you kind of said it's not quite enough just to have the vision and obviously you have to be very very determined as well but what are the other traits that you need and i had mentioned in my questions like and we, we spoke already about hard work but like patience and 
you know, those sort of traits that we all should have, but we, we might necessarily have them. Yeah, I'm not super patient. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my my main thing is anybody who is like that is to get themselves like um, a blank artist book, you know, like with a hard copy and to write their ideas down and also to draw them. So that even though they might know how to execute them at that point in their lives, they can revisit that idea and then make it in. I think an ideas book is so important. Like it's still at this age, I still have, I have an ideas book that sits on my bedside locker and it's mm -hmm. if I get an idea at two, three, four o'clock in the morning, I write it down and I draw it. And that way I have it before it's gone out of my head because the world gets in your way and mundane everyday things get in your way. But yeah, you have to be a little bit patient. I'm not hugely patient. I won't lie. I like to get things straight away and be done yesterday. Um, but obviously you do have to be a little bit patient. And also you need to be able to, sorry, you need to be willing to give up your free time to, to get on. Mm -hmm industry it's not enough that you go to work from half nine till six o'clock you need to give up your free time at at home and your free days like none of my shoots none of anything was ever done in a work day I'll always organize them for my days off so even though it's still work it's fun work but also that's how you progress in this business because there's not a boss alive that's going to say on a Friday, oh, you're doing a photo shoot, no problem. You know, you have mm -hmm. to be willing to actually give up part of your life. And that's the difference. And when you see people who progress in this business, it's because they, they're not just thinking about like them, themselves in a, in a sense as like, oh, I'm not giving up my free time for that. You absolutely have to give up your free time. And number one, that's the number one thing I will say, give up your free time never say no to opportunities and be super inquisitive be super inquisitive about everything like i'm not a photographer but i love the process of a photo shoot i will ask uh, what every button that he presses and to why he presses it you know because i want to know because I, I find it interesting it's another yeah. process and um you, I know you spoke to me separately um, about, you know, uh, your sort of your plans for 2021 and, you know, please God, 2021 will be a little bit more normal than 2020. <laughs> and I, I know that you spoke of your plans to put together an artist team. Um, can you yeah. tell me a little bit about that? So, yeah, I would love to put together an art team um, because I would love... Just, I love the whole process. I've been, I am on a part of a couple of art teams. I'm on the Hair Slayers art team. I'm on the Pharmavita art team. And I'm also on um, Hair Construction art team. So they're three different entities. But I'd love to make my own one. Do you know, a little bit weird, a little bit wonderful. Um, to do more shows and to, to show exactly, you know, from head to toe of a model how to break it down. Uh, that's the type of art team I would like to do. For, for a lot of people, art teams are just, it's one singular photo or it's one show. But what I'd like to do is do an educational art team where the it's done over two days. So basically you break down the whole look and then on the last day you show what it looks like and you show how to take the photographs. So for me, it's not just an art team of hairdressers, which is mostly out there. What I'd love is hairdressers makeup artists fashion and um photographers all in one to create the art to show how to create the art because i think that's the one thing in our industry is lacking that everybody is a separate entity and i'd like to show mm -hmm. how we all work together okay so that's the plan for 2021 yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then just in terms of um as you know the uh, professional beauty and hairdressing journal ireland are launching awards uh, in 2021, we were launching them in 2020, but obviously we had to hold off. The world. <laughs> yeah. So just you know, anybody you know interested in entering an award, like what are your your pointers for putting together an award-winning look? 
For me, number one and foremost, uh, people always think, especially when they're hairdressers, and I had to learn this the harder myself, was they always think of the hair as the most important. I obviously think that the hair is the most important because I'm a hairdresser. But what mm-hmm. I actually learned was it's the model. It's the story and it's how you put it together. So the same way as if you put a wig on a goat, it's not going to look good, you know? So, you <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to have to basically, your model comes first and foremost, and then you build your idea around that. So the model has to sell. She is your, your saleswoman or salesman. So she's selling your look. But also you have to have a good makeup artist behind you. A makeup artist who, who understands where you're going and, and what your vision is. Because, and someone who is creative as well. So that look goes with the hair. And then I'm not, I obviously, my aesthetic is my aesthetic, but it's, it's mm-hmm. not what I use for, for photo shoots. So I will get someone who is fashion, whether they're a designer or someone that, um, whether they're a designer or someone that, um, oh, what's is a stylist, I will use those, and again we'll sit down and we'll we'll talk through it, because I want the makeup artist, the hairdresser, and the stylist, the fashion stylist, to be on the same page so we all understand. Like for the extreme hair wars, I got um, a, a stylist from London to help me and we were talking over and back a lot. I explained to him what I wanted, stuff like that. He was sending me pieces of clothes. I was saying yes, no. And that's how I got so far. It's not just about the hair because if the clothes and the makeup and even down to the the shoe doesn't match the, if it doesn't tell a story, then it, it doesn't look cohesive. So you have to have a good team behind you and you have to have a strong model. Okay, so it's kind of like um, collaborating is, is very important. For me, yeah, it is. And, and not to have an ego and let other people's opinions in. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Not to, not to, sorry, not to let other people's opinions, what? To let other people's opinions, to take them on board. I think it's very... Oh, important. I get you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. kind of have an open mind. Exactly. Like sometimes you won't be like, absolutely not, no. Um, but it's still there. And you're, you're still being open to what about this way or that way. And sometimes it takes three or four goes or three or four stylings to get the photograph that you want. Like if people think that you go into a photo shoot and you take four to six pictures and that's it, that's a waste of a shoot. You should be doing about 200 with six different looks and then choose the best out of that and absolutely wreck your own head for a week solid trying to pick one photo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and um, and just finally, I suppose I just wanted to ask you, you know, on a personal level, like, you know, running the business and then doing all of that creative work, like, do you, I suppose it's probably hard to put it into numbers, do you split yourself like, 50-50 between the two or does it really depend on on the month or the time of the year I suppose lockdown you had what did you did you have an opportunity to to go very arty during lockdown when you weren't doing proper you know yeah. going into work yeah I started to paint again after 20 years so that was that was interesting and um, usually it's just sketching out stuff but I actually started to paint so lockdown gave me um it calmed me down a little you know, yeah. I have to stop. Um, and I realized what I what I wanted to do. And I realized that after 12 years of being in the air a lot, like, and, and going to different countries, before, if you'd asked me last year, it was just something that I did. But I actually really, really miss it. Um, so I realized that I, I do love that aspect to my job. And then I miss the salon work. I can't actually say it's 50-50 because... Some months I might be just in the salon, but I'll always be working on an idea in the back of my head and getting things going. Um, yeah. I don't sleep very much. So, <laughs> and <laughs> and a, a lot, yeah, a lot of my thoughts are taken up by hair. Um, I'm very lucky that I have someone to run the, the day-to-day running, but the lads in the shop are amazing. Like, they give me some of the best ideas as well. And also when I'm having heart failures 
over, you know, I can't, I can't get out what I want to do. They start breaking it down with me, you know, and they work. Yeah. And it, it's, it's beautiful. It's actually beautiful to work as part of a team. I'd be lost without the lads. I'd be lost. Absolutely lost. Yeah. No, I, I think it's lovely the way you have, you know, your, your day to day business, which almost gives you that sort of nice structure in life. But then you, you're able to channel all your creativity in other ways as well. You can. I love the combination of both in a person's life. Like I'm, I'm, I'm. Honest to God, I'm blessed. But um, there last year, someone said to me, and it was just a flippant remark of a family member, and they were like, "Oh, it's so easy for you," because I was, I was away a lot last year, you know, that kind of way. And they were like, "Oh, it's so easy for you," and you're going off here and you're going off there. And I was like, "Hold up now! It took ten years <laughs> of my life." I never went on a family holiday because I'm a mother as well. Like, and yeah. I didn't do a family holiday. All my money went into, you know, like stepping myself up for this. Now I'm at this point in my life. It is a little bit easier because I do have a lovely team behind me and I do have people to manage me. But it, it did take, what, 10 to 12 years to get to this point. <laughs> yeah, which goes back to the point of, you know, it takes hard work. It takes some sacrifices. Yeah. And, you know, like that sort of determination to keep going. Yeah. But you have to love it as well. And I absolutely adore it. I adore everything here. Everything. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, I think after chatting to you, I, I get that. But uh, it's <laughs> not really, you know, there's no point in, in going in the direction that you're going, that you've gone in, um, unless you have an absolute major passion and love for it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, the industry is a beautiful, beautiful industry and it will give you what you give it. But if you don't give all of you to it, it will swallow you. It will. It's so hard to to step out of the box in this industry. So you have to work so much harder because there is so many hairdressers. So to, to step out even a little bit takes a lot of a lot of work. But if you don't mind doing the work and if you enjoy it, it doesn't feel like work. Yeah just doing it because you're enjoying doing it if you get me yeah yeah okay so listen thank you so much for joining us um it was really lovely to talk to you and to hear all about your your artistic endeavors and uh obviously we wish you every bit of luck for the rest of the month i presume thank you've got a, a busy month a busy <laughs> yeah a busy month ahead of you now mm -hmm. are you booked right up until christmas oh before the lockdown even happened we were booked up so it's even extra extra mental yeah well, well, you know make, I I suppose, you. make the most I will. make the most of it while it's going on and um and listen thank you so much again for joining us and thank you to everybody for tuning in and keep an eye on our social media for the details of our next webinar so until then uh we will talk to you soon and thanks again marina bye bye, -bye.